I think transformations are really, really cool. Um, I'm not talking about transformers or anything like that. What I mean by transformations is uh, taking a graph and trying to figure out what the graph looks like without a calculator. So some of the examples, in just a second, I'm going to be having us, for example, sketch the graph of this or this weird thing or uh, this thing or this thing. You'll see we don't even need a graphing calculator for this. You can do all this stuff with a couple of tricks. And these tricks are all about transformations. So first of all, the key thing here is to start, oops, start with what I like to call a parent function. I'm not sure if this is the formal terminology. I've always just called these parent functions. So what I mean by that, these are basic things like uh, y equals x squared. You, know, you should know that that one looks like this. You know, this is something like this. Or maybe you start off with y equals square root of x. Maybe you don't know it yet, but this goes like this. Or maybe you do y equals sine x. If you don't know that one yet, sine x does something like this. So once you know a few parent functions, all you have to do then is, uh, well, do something to it. So in other words, you either uh, shift, or maybe you stretch it, or maybe you reflect it. So in other words, we're gonna start off by recognizing some of these parent functions and from there, we can just look at what some of these transformations do, and then we can start learning how to actually graph these bad boys. So if we look at this, we've got horizontal and vertical translations. That's the first thing we're going to do. Now, what a translation means, it means just move to the left or right. Okay, so I'm going to add that. Uh, I guess I need a little extra page here. There we go. So for a uh, translation, let's say, if I have uh, some graph, let's say I do a, a vertical translation in this case. So let's say I do that. So vertical translation. So what I'm going to do here is actually tell you a little bit about how they work. So let's say I have something like, I don't know, um, y equals f of x. But then what I do, this is anything, right? This is any parent function. It could be x squared, it could be whatever. But I take that and I add something to it. Let's say I add something like b. What does that mean? What this means is this is a vertical, whoops, I need to learn how to spell here. This is a vertical shift of b units. Um, so that's what this really is. So for example, um, if, maybe I should write this down. So if, um, let's say if it's a positive B, then that means, uh, whoops, maybe I should do an arrow because that might be misleading. But what does that mean? That means uh, go up, up by B units. I'm trying to do this in general right now, so this may look a little bit weird. This is not a T, by the way. I, uh, I mean plus B. If it's a minus B, that means down by B units. So let's take a look at an example, because maybe this isn't all that clear. But what I want to show you, though, is anytime you see any parent function you recognize, if you just slap on a plus something or minus something after it, then you know you're shifting up or down by B, depending on if it's a plus or a minus. So here's an example. Sketch the graph of Y equals X squared plus one. Now we won't need a calculator for it this time. So we need to know this parent function, X squared. That's a quadratic. It's a happy function, so to speak. In other words, it opens upwards. So if I was to try to draw it or sketch it, I know that, well, it wants to be like a uh, like a graph of y equals x squared, which in this case would be, I'm gonna draw it with a dotted line just to show you, I mean, this is what it's sort of, this is the parent function. But what do I do to that parent function? Well, I have a plus one. And if you look back here, I said if you add b, that means you go up by b units. So in this case, if I say x squared plus one, it looks like an x squared, except I go up by one unit. So that means if I really want to draw it, if this is zero, let's say this is one, then my graph actually does something like, whoops, 
like this. I drew it really, really bad, actually. That was a really crappy job. Uh, so this is plus one, so this graph basically does this. This is a quadratic. All you do is you just, it's like you've taken this little thing right here and you just dragged it up. So you see that? So it's like you just went up by one unit. That's what we did. We went up by one. That's why it was a vertical translation, right? Because we say vertical because it went straight up and down. And to translate something means to just pick it up and move it up or down, left or right. Okay, so that should be pretty straightforward. How about this one? Sketch the graph of y equals square root of x minus 1. Do you notice, though, it looked very carefully, this square root of x is one thing, so minus 1 is outside of the square root. So this is another vertical translation. So if I look at this, then, what's happened? Well, in this case, minus 1 means I go down by 1. So all I have to do, then, is draw my parent function. So in other words, this thing, it looks like a square root of x. So I'm going to draw a little dotted line version of my parent function. So a little dotted line. This is, this is what square root of x looks like. Does this. And what I want to do then is move it down by 1. So if I want to do that, that means uh, in this case, minus 1. And that means it'll do something like, uh, well, something like that. So it'll be something that goes like this. So it'll be the same graph like this, except you've just moved everything down by one. So take this starting point here, move that down. Everything should be moved down. That's how we do these graphs. So I hope you see that that's actually not so, so crazy hard. Now we can do the same sort of thing, but this time with vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal translations. Okay, so horizontal translations. So this time we've got, uh, so just like before, when we were doing a vertical translation, we had some general thing, y equaled f of x plus b. This is sort of, this is kind of what we were looking at before, f of x plus b. This time we're going to do something similar. Uh, but this time I guess I'll make it similar to what I was doing before. So uh, what we'll do this time, we'll say y equals, and this time in order to make things go left or right, um, what we do is we go like this, f of, and we say x, let's say minus a. This is normally how it's written. So this is something within the bracket. I did a bad job on my a here. I'll fix it up. There we go. So x minus a. So this right here, just put a little, okay, so here's what's going on. This, what it means, just like before, when we had f of x plus b, in other words, outside of the f of x, plus b, we did a vertical shift of b units. Well, in this case, then, what we have is we have a horizontal shift. Okay, so we actually move everything. Uh, we do a horizontal shift. Uh, and this time, though, um, we'll say of a units. And it's going to be left or right. All right. So you have to figure out if it goes left or right. Now this one, however, is a little bit weird. Okay, this right here, I want to put like big stars right here. It's sort of the opposite of what you expect. This is the biggest thing right here that I would suggest for students is that when you're doing these transformations, okay, this right here is really important. How important? Maybe I can make silly stars around it. Yeah, that is really tacky. I'll keep that. So it's the opposite of what you expect. 